Rocket Lab has taken a big step forward in its quest to reuse its launch vehicles by catching one as it fell back to Earth. On Monday, May 2, an Electron rocket lifted off from the Rocket Lab's Launch Complex 1 in New Zealand, carrying a payload of 34 small sats into orbit. The mission, dubbed there and back again, was Rocket Lab's 26th overall. The rocket's second stage separated from the first stage booster two and a half minutes after liftoff and continued to propel its payload into orbit. Meanwhile, the first stage began a rapid descent back to Earth. As the booster began to rapidly return home through Earth's atmosphere, a Sikorsky S-92, a twin-engine helicopter commonly used for offshore drilling or search and rescue operations, hovered on standby in a capture zone off the coast of New Zealand. The returning booster deployed a drogue parachute at approximately 13 km altitude to begin slowing itself, followed by its main parachute at about 6 km altitude. The result was dramatically slowing the stage from speeds exceeding 8,000 km per hour to just 36 km per hour. About 15 minutes after liftoff, as the 12.1-meter-tall booster glided toward the Pacific Ocean, the helicopter approached and hooked the parachute line with a hook. Following the catch, the helicopter pilot detected different load characteristics than previously experienced in testing and offloaded the stage for a successful splashdown. The stage was then loaded into the recovery vessel of the rocket lab and taken back to the company's production complex for analysis and assessment for reflight. The mid-air capture is a significant step forward in Rocket Lab's efforts to make Electron a reusable rocket in order to increase launch frequency and lower launch costs for small satellites. While the booster catch attempt drew attention to the launch, the mission's primary goal was to place 34 small sats into a sun-synchronous orbit at an altitude of 520 km, which the kick stage accomplished an hour after liftoff. The next launch of Rocket Lab is scheduled for May 27. The capstone CubeSat will be launched into a highly efficient transfer orbit to the Moon as part of the mission. The primary goal of Capstone, or the CIS Lunar Autonomous Positioning System Technology Operations and Navigation Experiment, is to test and verify the orbital stability of a near-rectilinear halo orbit around the Moon, which is the same orbit planned for NASA's Gateway program. NASA's Gateway is a small space station that will orbit the Moon, allowing astronauts access to the lunar surface. At its furthest, it will be 70,000 kilometers away from the Moon, before closing to within 3,000 kilometers. The lunar outpost will have astronaut living quarters, a science and research lab, and ports for visiting spacecraft. The first two modules of the outpost will be launched together on the Falcon Heavy rocket in November 2024. A SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft, carrying NASA's Commercial Crew Program Crew-3 astronauts have safely splashed down off the coast of Florida, bringing an end to their six-month-long stay on the International Space Station. NASA astronauts Raja Chari, Tom Marshburn, Caleb Barron, and European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Moore began their trip back to Earth with the undocking of Crew Dragon Endurance from the space station at 5.20 a.m. GMT on May 5. Their departure left behind three NASA astronauts, three Roscosmos cosmonauts, and one ESA astronaut on board the station to continue the long-duration Expedition 67 mission. Nearly 24 hours later, on May 6 at 4.43 a.m. GMT, all four astronauts splashed down safely in the Gulf of Mexico, ending their 177-day mission on board the orbiting laboratory. Launched on 10 November 2021, the Crew-3 astronauts completed hundreds of science experiments, including testing new methods for growing crops, studying drought-resistant cotton plants, and printing bandages made from skin cells, among many other scientific investigations. Morer also carried out ESA's Cosmic Kiss mission, a payload of 35 European experiments ranging from human health to materials science, benefiting life on Earth and the future of space exploration. The astronauts also took hundreds of photos of Earth as part of the Crew Earth Observation Investigation, which helps track natural disasters and changes to our home planet. During their six-month stay aboard the orbiting laboratory, all four Crew-3 astronauts performed spacewalks to service the space station and prepare it for the addition of upgraded solar arrays. The return of Crew-3 completed a series of three closely scheduled SpaceX flight events, beginning with Dragon Endeavour splashdown with Axe 1 crew on April 25, followed by the launch of Crew-4 on Dragon Freedom on April 27. The next astronauts to launch or land on a SpaceX vehicle are not scheduled until September. Satellogic, an Earth imaging company, announced on May 4 that it had signed a contract with SpaceX to launch 68 more satellites as it expands its constellation. 
Satellogic develops its own spacecraft, manages its constellation, and commercializes the Earth observation data they collect to better serve its customers across industries. The company did not disclose the terms of the agreement with SpaceX, but stated that the agreement covers payloads on at least four launches, starting in early 2023. Satellogic announced a similar agreement with SpaceX in January 2021, covering four rideshare launches. The company flew four satellites on the Transporter 2 rideshare mission in June 2021, and five on the Transporter 4 mission, that launched on April 1. Since returning to the Vehicle Assembly Building on April 26, ground systems teams have worked to prepare the Artemis 1 Space Launch System rocket and Orion spacecraft to roll back to Launch Pad 39B. Inside the Vehicle Assembly Building, engineers replaced a faulty helium check valve on the interim cryogenic propulsion stage that was identified after the second wet dress rehearsal attempt. Engineers inspected the valve and found a small piece of rubber that prevented the valve from sealing correctly. Engineers also performed tests to address a hydrogen leak on one of the two tail service mast umbilical that provide propellants as well as electrical connections from the mobile launcher to the rocket's core stage. Teams conducted leak checks on all the joints and tightened several flange bolts that could loosen over time and were the most likely source of the leak. Teams are on track to complete additional checkouts on the Mega Moon rocket as early as possible. Once all major work is completed, teams will retract the working platforms and prepare the integrated SLS rocket and the Orion spacecraft for the second journey to the launch pad. NASA expects to roll the launch vehicle to the pad by late May to complete the wet dress rehearsal test in the early to mid-June timeframe. Officials at the agency hope to launch the Mega Moon rocket as early as August, about two months later than previously planned. Boeing's Starliner capsule is finally ready to reattempt a test launch to the International Space Station. The uncrewed Boeing test flight to the ISS, dubbed OFT-2, was supposed to lift off in August 2021. But the mission has been delayed several times, with engineers struggling with a number of issues, including Florida's humidity corroding 13 of the 24 oxidizer valves in the Starliner's service module. Boeing and NASA officials announced on May 3 that the mission team had successfully addressed the issue, replacing the faulty service module with a new one, and that the capsule would be launched to the space station on May 19. The following day, on May 4, technicians rolled the Starliner capsule from Boeing's commercial crew and cargo processing facility at NASA's Kennedy Space Center to the United Launch Alliance's vertical integration facility. Teams then lifted the capsule with the help of an overhead crane and stacked it atop its Atlas V rocket. Now that the two vehicles are mated, the teams will do some more testing to ensure they are correctly communicating with one another. About 24 hours after the May 19 launch, Starliner will rendezvous and dock to the space station before returning to Earth 5 to 10 days later. If all goes well with OFT-2, Starliner will likely be cleared to carry NASA astronauts to and from the ISS in the near future. Now, let's discuss some of the major Starship updates from the past week. On April 14, during a structural stress test, the downcomer, or the transfer tube of SpaceX's upgraded Super Heavy prototype, Booster 7, incurred damage. SpaceX immediately rolled back the booster to the build site for repairs. Last week, after more than two weeks of repairs and refit, SpaceX once again rolled Booster 7 to the launch site to begin the next round of ground tests. A crane lifted and mounted the prototype on the orbital launch mount a few hours after it arrived at the launch site. Cryoproof tests will be performed on Booster 7 this week to ensure the integrity of the repaired transfer tube. The tests will begin as early as Monday, May 9. Once the booster passes the cryo tests without any issues, SpaceX will remove it from the orbital launch mount to take it to the build site for the installation of the Raptor engines. The booster will again be rolled back to the launch site for static fire testing after installing Raptors and thermal protection covers. SpaceX will initially begin the static fire test campaign by firing two or three Raptors, which will eventually lead to a full 33-engine static fire test. While Booster 7 is being prepared for ground tests at the launch site, its partner, Starship 24, is taking shape inside the high bay at the build site. SpaceX stacked the tank section and nose cone section of Ship 24 on May 8. A lot of work remains to be done on Ship 24, including Raptor installation, aft flaps and aero cover installation, internal and external plumbings, and some finishing touches on the thermal protection tiles. Once the assembly works are completed, Ship 24 will undergo ground testing at the launch site as early as June. 
If all goes according to plan, I hope that both Ship 24 and Booster 7 will be ready for the orbital flight test as early as August this year. According to Bloomberg, SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell expects the orbital flight test to take place in June or July rather than August. In any case, let's hope that the long-awaited test flight will not be delayed until late 2022 or early 2023. While everyone waits for the Starship's orbital flight test, a recently released document makes some serious allegations against SpaceX, which may halt Starship launches from South Texas. According to documents from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, obtained by CNBC through a Freedom of Information Act request, SpaceX must take steps to track and mitigate its impact on endangered species in their habitat in order to gain approvals for testing and commercial launches of Starship from Texas. The documents show that the piping plover population has declined as a result of SpaceX's activity. The bird is one of a number of endangered species that call the Texas shoreline home. In addition to SpaceX's impact on the piping plover, the Fish and Wildlife Service found that the launch site expansion, vehicle traffic, noise, heat, rocket testing, and other activity could endanger the red knot, jaguarundi, ocelot, monarch butterfly, and several species of sea turtles' populations. Among its recommendations and requirements, the Fish and Wildlife Service wants SpaceX to monitor affected animal populations carefully, limit construction and launch activity to specific seasons or times of day and night, and use shuttles to reduce vehicle traffic of workers on location. This is not the first time that the business enhancement of SpaceX at Boca Chica has concerned various government departments and organizations. In March, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers asked the space agency to prove that its starbase site expansion would not harm the area's endangered species, wetlands, and waters. The Army Corps said that the starbase launch facility expansion could not be resumed until SpaceX submits the requested information. Ultimately, the Federal Aviation Administration must decide and is responsible for final approvals and oversight of SpaceX in Texas. It's preparing a final environmental review and permitting report, which will dictate whether or not SpaceX needs to take further steps to curb its impact on the environment. The FAA recently completed Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act, and the only project left is the Environmental Impact Assessment, which is expected to be completed by May 31. Meanwhile, the U.S. Federal Communications Commission granted SpaceX a license on Friday to conduct the Starship's orbital flight and recovery test, beginning on May 21. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service document also hints that SpaceX is planning to expand the solar farm near the build site. As of late 2021, the solar farm covered 5.4 acres and supplied approximately 1 megawatt of power, with a 3.87 megawatt-hour battery for energy storage. The current expansion, which is expected to take two years to complete, would add 750 kilowatts of power for a total of 1.6 megawatts of energy, as well as an additional battery system capable of storing up to 8 megawatt hours. The document indicates that SpaceX is planning to use panels made by Chinese manufacturers Trina Solar and Tesla Power Packs that it has used on the project before. Now, let's move on to other Starship updates. You may recall the Starship Raptor thrust simulators that were delivered to the launch site last month. All three inner sea-level Raptor engine thrust simulators were installed on the suborbital launch pad A last month. And on May 3, SpaceX teams completed the installation of the outer three Raptor vacuum engine simulators on pad A. Once ready, Starship 24 will be stress-tested on this launch pad. The construction of SpaceX's Star Factory is progressing at the build site. This photograph shared by RGV Aerial Photography shows the progress as of May 6. Starship's second orbital launch pad and launch tower construction are progressing within the perimeter of Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 39A. The concrete base structure of the launch pad is taking shape, and works are progressing on the Orbital Launch Mount Foundation. At SpaceX's Roberts Road facility, teams have assembled four of the nine launch tower sections, with the fifth section currently being assembled. With this, we have covered all the major updates from last week. Please share your thoughts on the latest science news and Starship updates in the comments section. Also, do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more weekly updates. And as always, thanks for watching.